Hey folks, John here, Old Hickory Forge. Welcome back. So, what's going on today? I'm all cut up on orders. I don't have anything big in the works right now. Uh, so I'm going to knock out a project I've been wanting to do for a while. What I'm going to make is a meat cleaver type knife with a railroad spike handle. So, to start out, I've got a railroad spike. I've got a channel cut in there with an angle grinder as far back as it'll comfortably go. I'm going to use a hot cut tool to split that back about another half, three quarters of an inch or so. And what i got here, quarter inch thick by two inch wide, chunk at 1075. Same steel I used to make the blades of my axes. We're going to forge weld that into there and uh, go from there and see what we can come up with. So, first things first, we're going to take uh, the material that's going to become our blade. And we're going to scarf down the area that's going to be welded into the railroad spike. Just uh, It'll help us get a more seamless weld if we don't have hard corners in the weld. Then you just want to chuck it up in the vise. Take your chisel and cut some teeth onto the area that's going to be welded. You'll see why when I go to put it together. So, see what we got? Then just brush it clean, flux it, and set it off to the side and let it cool for now. Take a railroad spike, chuck it up in the vise, take you a hot cut tool, spread open that channel you made. Once you've got it split back to where you want it, just go ahead, give it a good brushing. Go throw some flux on there. And then close it up just a little bit, just to make mating the two pieces up a little easier. At this point, your bitch should be cold enough to handle. I'll just sheet that thing in there real good until it will stand on its own. Those teeth you fell onto to help it grab. Squeeze that baby shut. I'm going to forge weld all that up and uh, keep moving. All right, we're looking pretty good. First weld, here we go. few stiff blows, brush it, flux it back in the fire. If your weld's no good, you'll know when you go to brush this thing, it'll come out of here. So, no doubt in my mind that's stuck. Second weld, here we go. A little more aggressive this time. Felt pretty solid. Now it's just a matter of blending all that in. So, now it's time to start forging out the blade. I'm trying to pull a whole nother inch of width out of this, so I'm gonna start my bevel up here at the spine. I slowly carry it towards the edge as if I'm forging a full flat grind. Even though the grind on the finished knife is gonna be quite a bit different. So, this thing's widening out pretty good. I think I'm gonna get the three inches I want. So, like I said, just start your bevel up at the spine and slowly carry it towards the edge. Working your way up and down the whole length so, moving right along, now it's time to punch a hole in the top corner of this thing. I'm using a handled punch because this is a big piece of steel and getting your hand close to it hurts, so using a handheld punch is kind of a pain, but you certainly could do it. So, then I'm just going to use my handheld round punch and drift that hole open to maybe about half an inch, maybe five eighths. I think that'll look pretty good. Well, that ain't bad. Then we'll just throw a nice twist in the handle. And just take you a couple heats with a wooden mallet. Straighten up your handle. Put the curve where you like it. Make sure your cutting edge is nice and center. 
So here's the blade off the anvil. There's really not that much work to do. I'm just gonna go to the bench grinder, get the profile ground out, and uh, then I'll grind the bevels. I bought a bench grinder for profiling blades just because when you have that little bit of material in contact with your belt, it's almost like a bandsaw where if you don't have enough teeth in contact with the work, it wants to break off rather than cut. So profile grinding can be rough on belts if you do a lot of it, and you know belts are expensive, at least the ones I buy are. So this is a pretty good investment, I think. So here we are for the bench grinder. Moving right along, profile's done. All that's left now is to do the bevels, bring it down to preheat tree thickness, and uh, heat treat this thing. So here we are after rough grinding the cutting edge. Now it's time to heat treat this thing. We're gonna do an edge quench and then draw temper like I do with my axes. This is a big piece to do that with, but I think I can handle it. Also, as you can see, Forge weld is seamless, so that's pretty cool. But anyway, I've already normalized this thing three times before I ground it, so uh, let's get moving. So, 1075 is an oil quench steel, so we're going into preheated vegetable oil. I'm going to quench off everything but about the last inch or so. Just let that soak in there real good. Then we'll clean off some of the scale. And we'll watch the oxides run. You see we got blue creeping forward until we get a nice light straw on the edge. So here we are after the quench, you can see what I was talking about with the oxide creeping for. We got blue, dark brown, bronze, and we got light straw on most of the edge. Got a little warm back here, but that's okay. It's uh, not going to soften it to the point where it won't hold an edge well. It's tempered about kind of like an axe would be, which is, it makes sense because that's kind of what it's similar to what it's going to be used for, and it's going to have, you know, a stout convex edge similar to an axe. So now let's just finish growing this thing and get it sharp. So now it's time to finish honing the edge. I've got it taken up to on the slack of the 600 grip belt. It's pretty sharp. It's biting fingernail all the way across, but it still needs to be stropped. So what I got here, this is pretty freaking cool. This is called a power strop wheel. It's made of leather. So you just put it on your buffer and, uh, you know, you don't have to strop a blade by hand. It's really going to save a lot of time. You just take some of this white compound, put it on there. And you know, if you're doing a big blade by hand, you gotta do like 50 or 100 swipes each side. That takes a while, but this accomplishes the same thing in seconds. Here we go. One railroad spike 1075 meat cleaver. I didn't quite get the three inches I wanted out of the blade. I got about two and a half, but I still feel like it looks pretty good. It looks pretty proportionate. That power strop wheel is awesome. It, uh, it puts an edge that, quite frankly, for a meat cleaver is unreasonably sharp. But ain't nothing in the world wrong with that. Pretty simple, pretty easy project. This is a lot quicker than I thought it would be. There's less than two hours of work in this, so I'll probably make these to sell on the Etsy store as well as to make for the stores that carry my work here in the near future. But this one in particular is going to be given away to celebrate our first 5,000 subscribers. As you know, the channel's quickly approaching 5,000. I think we're at 47 something right now. So rules are the same as all the other giveaways I've done. Just drop something in the comments if you want to win the knife. Uh, when we hit 5,000, giveaway's over. So if you're watching this video and we're over 5,000, sorry, giveaway's over. But uh, just drop a comment. Uh, come the time we get to 5,000, I'll put everybody who commented in a random number generator. And uh, we'll pick a winner. Whoever wins, I'll send you a PayPal invoice for whatever it's going to take to ship this thing to wherever you are. You are responsible for shipping. If you're somewhere with crazy knife laws, make sure this thing's actually legal. I can't think of any reason why a meat cleaver would be illegal, but, you know, you never know. But anyway, there's that. If you like what you saw, like, share, subscribe, all that jazz, and uh, y'all take care. Also, commenting more than once will not get you in more than once, so don't do that.